Hi there, and welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm Dimitri Lylan, and I'm really glad to be back on another episode. And I've got Andre and Meet here today. Hey, guys, welcome. Hi. Hello, Hi. thank you. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, SQL Server connectivity. We're going to do some Visual, Visual Studio Code demos and a lot of other cool stuff. But before we get going, I wanted the, the folks here, my guests, to introduce themselves and tell you all what they do at Microsoft. So why don't you go ahead? Hi, um, I'm Andrea Lamb. I'm a program manager on the SQL Server team. Uh, for the last two years or so, I've been concentrating on the connectivity space, particularly with C Sharp, Java, and Ruby connectivity to SQL Server, uh, both in the cloud and our cloud platforms. Cool. All right. And hey, guys, I'm Meet Bagdev. I also work in the same team as Andrea. I work on connectors for ODBC, PHP, and Python. Cool. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, I met you guys about I guess, six months ago or so, and uh, you know it, it was really great to see a team of people focused on connectivity because SQL Server, you know, it's, it's a great product. I've used it quite a bit in in .NET uh, applications that I've worked on. I've actually had SQL as a backend for for Java applications in the awesome. past as yep. well. And if you really go really far back, the, there was some other tech there, but I, I think um, you know a lot of people are familiar with what you know SQL Server can do for their .NET applications. And mm -hmm. today maybe we'll we'll show them a bit more uh, about languages and frameworks that you guys support. So uh, do you want to maybe kick it off a little bit and tell folks you know, yeah, kind of how the stories evolved? Um, so more and more, our team's been concentrating a little bit more on kind of the cross-platform story for SQL Server. You know, now that SQL Server vNext CTP1 is out, we now have support for Linux, both Ubuntu and RHEL. And we also have support for Mac via Docker. Um, so this makes it much more important for us to have a solid cross-plat story across an, our, our entire connectivity landscape, and that includes, you know, traditional C Sharp and Java, as well as new open source languages, including like Python, PHP, and Ruby. Um, so on our team, we kind of look at that for the entire SQL Server team, and we look at how do you bring all these um, awesome program programming languages to have the connectivity towards you know SQL Server and like I mentioned before it's you know third party clouds you know on premises and our cloud platforms uh, PaaS and all that kind of stuff so um, you know what we've recently been working on more and more is actually our new website we have a new getting started yep. website nice that one. yeah it's a homegrown PM type of thing and we've really worked very hard on that um, and basically just kind of walks you through all of the steps to get your prerequisites, to get SQL Server running, um, get all your language prerequisites, the connectors that you may need to connect to SQL Server, and all that good stuff. And then we also walk you through some basic CRUD applications, and then show you some cool features that we think will, you know, you'll enjoy to make your, your application a little bit better. Cool. Uh, one of the things I, I want to level stuff for the audience mm -hmm. is I think the, the word cross-platform is a bit overloaded. And yeah. I, I think SQL is, is quite a quite a bit in that in that terminology now. So let's kind of talk for the various pieces. So of course we've had you know SQL Server as the engine, right? And that's mm -hmm. traditionally something you've only run on Windows. Eventually, uh, when Azure became a thing, we made SQL database, right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, something you you can run. Uh, totally in a managed way yeah. in, in the cloud or something you could run on premises or in some virtual machine. And then we, of course, have our tooling, which traditionally has been Windows. Mm -hmm. And and that was kind of the, the, the story. And then uh, the, there were a bunch of drivers that we had made or the community had made and yeah. that, that allowed different languages and frameworks to connect up to SQL. Uh, and the biggest thing that we just released is the, the whole idea that, okay, well, we're going to take the engine cross-platform mm -hmm. and we're going to bring that to Linux, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that was our first kind of mm -hmm. cross-platform play. And now we have the Visual Studio Code yes. tooling, so that's cross-platform. Yeah. And our driver story is getting better and, and evolving and open sourcing in some cases. So those are kind of the three pillars, and, and we're going to focus on the connectivity part. But mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure folks in the audience kind of understood there's many aspects of cross-plot. Yep. We, we care about the tooling, connectivity, and the engine, and uh, we, we'll work with some of the support. Yeah. So why don't you show folks the, the website that uh, you know can get them oriented a bit. Awesome. Do you want to walk through it? Or? Yeah, sure. So as you can see, this is our getting started website. You can basically pick a language you want. So we have C Sharp, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, and R for now. Um, we have all the OSs here. So let's say you're a Node.js developer and you want to get started on Mac. Just click on it. And so you can see instructions to set up your environment. It'll talk about how to install SQL Server, um, a command line tool. Next, it'll also show you how to create your first application. Um, this will be a very simple application. It'll let you do simple queries, which will be create, um, read, update, and inserts. And lastly, we'll have a really cool hero feature. So we're going to talk about um, actually an ORM and then a hero feature called Column Store. And um, before we get started, I think we have a couple of demos we can show here. So I guess we can do Java. Yeah, let's um, go ahead yeah, and do Java right, first. Let's do Java first. 
Yeah, so one of the things I wanted to mention about the site, and we talked about this before, which is that the folks should, should know that we, we fully support, you know, um, C++ and most other scenarios. Uh, Ruby. Ruby, Ruby right? yes. So those two, the website is just a, still a work in progress, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So we, we're working on that. I don't want folks to see this and say, oh, are you guys yeah. dropping C++ no. support Not or Ruby? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're committed there. So you, you guys are ready for the first demo? Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Let's All right, do it. so we, we'll be right back, and Andrea will, will begin the demo part of this, and uh, meet will be back later to, to show some more demos as well. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. All right, well, we're back and ready for the demo, so uh, why don't you go ahead, Jay? Yeah, so today I'm going to show you how to set up SQL Server on an Ubuntu 16.04 machine. We'll start with creating a simple Java application to help you kind of get started. You'll get all the prerequisites that you need to run Java properly on Ubuntu 16.04. Um, and then I'll show you kind of a simple application to connect to your database, run some simple operations. Um, I'm going to do all this within VS Code. Um, and I'll kind of use the Java language um, extension that's available in the marketplace. Cool. And one of the things I wanted to kind of level out people is that we're, we're going to show a very specific scenario, right? Mm -hmm. So Java connecting to SQL Server on Linux, yep. which is our preview. Yep. But this, this scenario would work well just like if you had Java connecting to exactly. SQL database in the cloud, right? Yes. Or SQL on-premises. This is just the example, but we, we, see, we see kind of SQL as, as a SQL it's anywhere a, thing. It's, it's not... It's a platform. Yeah, like it's a platform. SQL yep. is not different on Linux versus, you know, For being... Sure you know, in the cloud or whatever, right? It's just that right now, this is the demo we want to mm -hmm. So yeah, it'd be as simple as just kind of changing the connection string parameters to kind of point to wherever your SQL may be. Cool. Awesome. All right, let's show Yeah, so let's get started. So uh, first steps, so we're over on the website now, and I'm actually in the Java Ubuntu tab that we have set up here. Um, so to set up your environment first, obviously one of the most important things we're showing today is SQL Server. Um, so it's kind of a few quick commands. So let me go ahead and I'll open up VS Code. And VS Code has this really awesome integrated terminal built in, so I can actually run everything all within VS Code without having to like switch to a different tool or anything. Yeah, like that. cool feature. Yeah. So um, let's see. Let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is actually just get into root. So let me switch that. I'll paste this command over. Put in my password. Awesome. We're in. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to make sure that all of our keys are set up. So we'll just add the keys that we need to actually access our repository where SQL Server is. Paste that in. So that's done. And then we'll switch back over, grab one more command. And this is actually just the command to actually get the key for SQL Server. Paste that in. Paste never works for me. Yeah. There you go. All right. Cool. All right. Then we got that. And then we'll just exit our root. And then the next thing would be to actually just update all of the repository lists. So we'll just do that really quickly. Um, paste. It's going to go ahead and fetch a bunch of stuff. Perfect. That was fast. Yeah, nice and quick. And this is the most important step. So this is actually going to get SQL Server and install it for us if, uh, from our package. So let's go ahead and paste that in. Awesome. So the next thing is, you know, do you want to download this package? Yes, I do. And that's just going to quickly run through and get the, the SQL Server package. Nice. Unpacking, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see Visual Studio running on a Mac. I still, yeah. you know, every time I, I see it, I mean, I, I don't have a Mac. I'm not a, I'm not a Mac user mm -hmm. much, but it's just awesome to see us being everywhere now. Oh, truly cross platform Especially with VS Code. It's such a cool, <laughs> cool little editor. It's super powerful. Okay. So I would say kind of the next step we have to go through now is to actually set up SQL Server. So that's going to actually create um, the password for our system ad admin. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we have to like accept the the license agreement and all that kind of stuff. So sure. let's set that up. If nothing else, we're proving that the website really does have valid <laughs> instructions. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're cutting and pasting. You're shoving them. Uh, OK, so I'm going to let me choose a password that Meet can use after as well. Confirm my password. You should just mess it up for him. Ooh. I'm sure he'll, he'll enjoy typing in <laughs> the password. Did it take it? OK. Okay, perfect. Setting it up. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and start SQL Server. And we'll just enable it on boot, might as well. Awesome. So through all that, just set up SQL Server, and it's now running on an Ubuntu 16.04 machine, awesome. which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, 
So the next thing I'm going to do, just because we're going to need Java, is I'm actually going to install the Java runtime environment, mm -hmm. uh, the Java development kit. Right. And I'm also going to get Maven. Do you know what Maven is, Dimitri? You know, I keep hearing the word and nodding when people ask me, but I'm going to be <laughs> honest this time. No, I'm actually not um, sure. So Maven is really awesome. So it's what a lot of uh, Java developers use to kind of build and manage their dependencies and their projects mm. and stuff like that. So one of the biggest requests that we ever got for our Java driver, um, the JBC driver for SQL Server, is that we weren't kind of where all the native Java developers were. Right. Um, and we kind of may it cause a little bit of friction because you'd have to go to the Microsoft Download Center, you'd have to get like a tar file or a zip file and then unpack that and then point your project to that and kind of got a little bit complicated and right. you know I could understand everybody's frustration. So um, one of our biggest things now is we've actually put our JDBC driver up um, in Maven Central Repository. So now Java developers can easily go ahead and just grab the dependency, add it to their project and build their project with our JDBC driver. Awesome. So now it's just part of the natural flow. Exactly. For developers. Awesome. So yeah. I just installed the Jerry. Uh, we're going to grab the development kit as well. So we'll need both of those to actually run all of our project. That's grabbing that. And then the next thing we'll need after that is to actually install Maven as well. So yeah, like I mentioned before, it's used to build and manage all your dependencies. And it's pretty cool because that means each project that you build, you can kind of specify your own dependencies. So let's say you know, you're searching for project project. You don't right. need the same dependencies. You can take those out and add them as you see fit. Cool. All right, so that's done. We'll install Maven. I think what's cool is we still haven't left VS Code. Like, yeah, the, having the terminal here is, is a really big deal. Yeah. It makes it much easier. OK, so that's going to work through that. Um, and then we can just confirm that we have Maven by just running a Maven V. So cool. let's just. I like how you guys show the output. It's, it's always uh, mysterious when you're doing something it, the first exactly. time. You're like, is this, did the output show the right thing? Or if there's some, something in there that looks suspicious. All right, cool. Awesome. So we've got Apache Maven 3.3.9. We're using Java 8, um, and it's put into our in our home directory. All right, cool. So now we have like everything that we need to start programming mm -hmm. uh, with Java on on this machine here. So why don't I go ahead and show you how to like get a simple project started? Let's do it. All right. So um, Maven's cool because it actually has kind of like sample projects for you to get started. So if you run a command like this, you specify the name of your project and a few other parameters, mm -hmm. you can actually create a Hello World application without having to do anything. Um, oops, paste. So what this is going to do is it's going to set up a Maven project for me. It's going to create a few files. Um, the two most important files it's going to create is the dependencies file. Mm -hmm. So it's called pom.xml. Um, and then an app.java file that's kind of embedded in a few folders. So if I kind of wanted to show you that through like the file explorer, just to explain yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, so that pom.xml file is probably one of the most important ones. So that's where I'm going to actually put the JDBC driver in it. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then the next full, uh, file that I'm going to open is the app.java, and that's where we're going to put all of our application code. Cool. So um, one of the biggest things that we've been working on in terms of making sure that we have native support for Java developers is, like I said, mentioned before, putting that uh, the JDBC driver up on the Maven Central repository. In order to do so, we wanted to also make sure that you know the source code was available for Java developers to see. So right. we've actually announced that we've open sourced the JDBC driver for SQL Server. Um, all the source code is now on GitHub. You can actually go to the repository, file any issues you see. Um, Java developers can, you know, make pull requests if they want. If there's something that they think we're missing, or you know, they want to help us clean up our code, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool because you know our kind of goal for all that was to make sure we're kind of closing in that feedback loop, making sure that we're able to respond to any issues as quickly as possible and stuff like that. Yeah, so. I, I think one of the most important things to kind of tell our community is that look, we we move, we're moving things to open source because we want to be part of the community. We want for sure. their feedback, their help. We want to be transparent yep. wherever possible, but we're not abandoning drivers. Here, exactly. Right? Fact, we're investing more than ever, I would say. Yeah, into this and so I think mean, personally for me is you know in the last few years I've just kind of learned more and more about what it is Java developers are looking for, and one of the biggest things is native install experiences. You know, decreasing that friction for them to get what they need and get started as quickly as possible. So that was one of our biggest goals, and I'm hoping that you know through this open sourcing work and getting up on Maven that we can actually do that for them. Yeah, and how do you guys like find out what Java developers want? What, what tactics do you use to so use the feedback? So I think what's really cool is um, 
now that we're on GitHub, we can actually send up pulse surveys and stuff like that. So we can actually mm -hmm. ask cool. the community what you know what it is that they're looking for, what kind of scenarios that you know they're trying to actually solve with their applications um, and their different workloads and stuff like that. Right. So um, otherwise, it's a lot of making sure that whatever we're lighting up on SQL Server, um, vNext, all the support that is required on the client side, we're also lighting up in the in, in all of our connectors um, and mm -hmm. making sure that there's support for those features. Right, and we use like I'm guilty of you saying the word driver. You say yes. the word connector, okay. so we're saying the it's, same thing. It's right? the same it's thing, com exactly. Common language overload, and yep. um, I, I think it's it's very important to to say, look, we, we know we're revving all our products really fast, including SQL Server. Yep. Right, I, I would say probably speeding up if anything else. And drivers need to keep up, and we, exactly. we, as as community build drivers that we sort of identify as top drivers, or yep. as we build drivers, we're going to be looking to make sure that support gets in, even if it's our engineers mm -hmm. doing the work. So yep. I think that, that's really a big step up. Yeah. Um, OK, so where do we leave off here? So what we I was going to do next, um, yeah. yes, I was going to add our JDBC driver, the one that's in Maven, as a dependency uh, to our project here. So very simple to do. We also included that on our website. So the dependency is just right here. So I'm just going to copy that code over. And I'm going to paste that into my XML here. So still within the larger dependencies tag. So basically, we are in the group ID. It's called com.microsoft.sql server. Um, our artifact or our jar is called msql-jdbc. And the version I'm going to use today is uh, 6.1.0. O.jre8. Um, I'm running Java 8 on this computer. So mm -hmm. we also have a Jerry 7 jar available if you need it. So if you're running an older version of Java, you can uh, use that for your Java 7 project. Cool. All right. And one of the things that I like to do personally is um, I like to specify to Maven that I want to build against Java. Um, 1 8. Java, yeah, 1 8. Because sometimes if you have conflicting versions on your on your computer, it kind of messes things up. So I like to specify that it's against uh, 1.8. You know, if you want to create a project that's built in Java 8, but you're compiling it against Java 7, you can also do that because Maven lets you do that. Cool. All right, so we're going to head and save that. So all we did was we added the JDBC driver as a dependency, and then we also specified to build against Java 8. All right. And then in our app.java, uh, like I mentioned before, Maven kind of just created a sample project for us. So it actually created kind of a Hello World app for us. Um, but I'm going to replace this code with some of the sample code that we have here. Um, and this sample code is basically going to create a database um, on my local host uh, SQL Server. And it's going to yeah, create sample DB here. Cool. And then it's going to uh, create a table called employees. We're going to insert a few employees, um, and those employees can have a name and a location. So you can see here in Nikita, India, uh, Tom in Germany. And then we'll insert another employee in, and then we'll update one of the locations for one of the employees, and then we'll just delete one of them, just to show you that we can actually walk through all the simple yeah. CRUD steps. Yep, basic CRUD demo, but I think it does a good yep. job to demonstrate all the basics there. So let's go ahead and just replace this code, paste that in. Awesome. So I have the um, Java language extension uh, also included on my VS Code here. Yeah. Awesome. So we've saved that. And the next thing that we need to do is actually build our project. So it's super simple to do. You just run a simple command, maven package. So Back to terminal. let's make sure we're in our SQLs, in our proper, yep, we're in the folder. And we're going to run maven package. And that's going to build everything. Um, it's going to grab a few things. This is the first time I've ever built on this machine. Um, it's also going to run some simple tests. And it's basically just going to make sure, like, are you specifying the right dependencies? Um, is there anything in the POM file that doesn't make any sense? Downloading a few more things. Yeah. We're in a good connection here. It's yeah. nice and fast. All right. Should be done in a second. That means to hack the terminal window to play some music. <laughs> All right, cool. I think it's kind of, it started the test. Awesome. Yes, there you go. Build success. So what this does is it, I told it to actually output a jar. Um, so you can, you know, you can build towards different things. So when the project is done building, it packages as a jar. So, right. all right, cool. So, you know, now we have a new jar created. It's called SQL Server Sample 1.00.jar. And the next thing to do is actually run it. Let's make sure we actually did something with the code that I, I put in. Yeah. Um, and that's also very quick to do. So you just run. A Maven exec command. So I'll paste that in as well. And basically, it points it to where the um, Java application is. So uh, my main class is uh, in my app.java file, so it's pointing it to app. Cool. 
All right, so the first Drum thing roll. it's, yeah. Oh no. Oh no, it's an exception. What did it yell at? Oh. Password S issues. Silly me, didn't update my password. Yeah, it's not your password. That would have <laughs> been, been the easy one. <laughs> All right. All right, we're gonna run that one more time. Real code. Real code yeah. has to throw this one exception, yes. otherwise it doesn't count. This is this is the demo yeah. gods making fun of me. Yeah. Okay, and we'll run that again. So we repackaged it. Perfect. So the first thing it was doing was it was connecting to SQL Server. Did that. Yeah. Um, then it created sample DB. That's done. So the next thing it's going to do is actually populate um, that employees table with some data. Mm -hmm. So that's done. And then we're going to insert a new employee. Done. And then we're going to update Nikita's location. Done. And then we're going to delete someone, Jared. And then let's go ahead and spit the rows back out. So we now have three employees in our table. Um, so, you know, obviously I can see that the app did that, mm -hmm. but how do I make sure that it's actually written to the database and I can actually see it? Yeah, let's um, take a look. How do so, we yeah, the cool thing about VS Code is we have a new extension. It's the MS SQL extension for VS Code. So, let yeah. me go ahead and show you how to query that. Uh, so, let me open a new file. The first thing I'm going to do is connect to my database. Uh, yes, we need to change to SQL language and we're going to create a new connection profile. So we are local, and I'm gonna pass in the username, my password, and we'll save the password, and we'll call this localhost connection. All right, so as you can see in the bottom right, it's connecting, perfect. So it's connected yes. to localhost, we're connected to MasterDB for now, um, logged in as, S, as SA. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the database that we created, it's called SampleDB. So let's make sure that I actually have stuff in my, um, my employees table. So I'm gonna whip up a simple query. Awesome. I love the IntelliSense yeah. SQL. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Let's, let's see if it actually worked. Execute query. There you go. Awesome, so everything that I said I had in the terminal is actually written to the database and actually has been updated. So, you know, like in a matter of minutes, I was able to create a new Maven project, add the JDBC driver to my Java project, and then run some simple CRUD commands. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we talked about earlier, and, and I think it's good to, to banter a little bit about it, is, is the whole notion of like, look, we, we just showed a sample, right? I yes. mean, this, we, we know this is very much, you know, demo style code, uh, but we're, we're committed to SQL Server being, being a great experience in production, in production environments with people, whether that's, you know, making sure that the latest SQL Server features are in as, yep. we, as we ramp up, and also supporting them with issues. So, uh, what, what can you talk about from the support perspective? Like, how do we see these drivers? If people have problems, if mm -hmm. they see issues in production, whatever, what's the So, recourse? obviously, the first line of command for us is our support engineers. So, anybody who does have a problem can contact us through the support team. Um, right. Otherwise, we are available on, like, Stack Overflow. We triage those questions pretty much every day. We go through all those as a PM team, making sure that we're answering all the questions, whether it's Stack Overflow, actually MSDN forums. Mm -hmm. um, and then now that we're on GitHub, um, let me go ahead and yeah. show you the, the project for the JDBC driver, MS SQL JDBC. Um, so one of the great things I, I like about us being now on GitHub is, are we going? Yeah. Um, our team now watches all of the issues and pull requests very aggressively. And one of our big things for us is our goal is to answer any issue or any new pull request within like 48 hours. And we want to make sure that we're actually answering the issues in a way that, you know, the people that are actually following things, people who actually take the time to actually come to the repository are getting their questions answered. Cool. Um, so, you know, since we open sourced, which was a few weeks ago uh, from today, we've actually aggressively been trying to close many pull requests. So we've closed 34, which has been really awesome. Um, it's, it's kind of nice for us to start learning like how to react to um, new things that come in on our, on our GitHub. So I would say, you know, if you do have an issue, one of the best places to do it, if you, know, if you don't feel comfortable like reaching out to a support engineer, just simply filing it on our mm -hmm. GitHub and we'll answer it as quickly as we can. We'll have the conversations that we need. Um, otherwise, you know, um, you can also check out on our website, we actually have a uh, Gitter chat room that you can join. So if you know for some reason you think there's something wrong with the code, we're also watching this Gitter as well and watching the conversations and responding uh, back as quickly as possible. 
And another way, if you know, let's say yeah. you don't like to have instant messaging, you can also leave us a discuss comment at the bottom of the page, and we also look at that. Cool. So it sounds like you guys are monitoring all, all the big, yeah. you know, typical ref channels, yeah. you know, Stack Overflow forums. You've got your issues on GitHub. Mm -hmm. You've got your your support number. People can call the traditional Microsoft CTS, you know, cu yep. customer technical support yep. number. And you're even watching comments on yep. on the bottom of the page. So We're that's everywhere. Awesome. You're everywhere. <laughs> cool. All right, so is that all you're going to show for you? Yeah, that's here? what I'm going to show today. So, you know, just the overview, like open source JGBC driver, you can now access everything through the Maven Central repository. And that's kind of the biggest things that we've been kind of um, adding towards, making sure that Java developers can use SQL Server. Cool. All yeah. right. Well, we'll get Meet back on. We'll, we'll get into the next demo. Sounds good. Thank right. you. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, and we've got our next demo. Welcome All right. Back. Thank you. you. You were hiding in the back there. I was, yeah. I was almost like knocked over the camera. That's sort of thing. A couple of times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are you going to show us? So uh, similar to what Andrea showed for Java, we've been making a lot of improvements on the PHP front. Mm -hmm. uh, our PHP driver is also on GitHub. It's fully open sourced. Uh, and we recently added a couple of really cool things. So we now support Linux, which we didn't use to before. Uh, as approximately two months ago, we support Ubuntu 15.04, 15.10, and 16.04. And we support Red Hat 6 and Red Hat 7. Uh, and we also created Peckle packages. So at Peckle, it's kind of like Maven. It's a package manager um, that lets you install PHP packages, directly linking it to the runtime. So you don't have to uh, get an SO file, put it somewhere, things like that. You right. just build it from source, link it to PHP, and PHP knows where to read it from. Okay. So awesome. that's kind of the NPM or the apt get of the PHP world. So in my demo, I'm just really going to quickly try to install the driver um, on my fresh Ubuntu box, uh, run a sample code, and see if we can run some queries and see if the VS Code extension can pick it up. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'll jump right into the demo. So I'm going to use the same website that we have. Um, we've already set up the environment, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. I'm going to go straight to um, creating the uh, PHP application. So let's see. First things, what we need to do is we need to add um, the ODBC driver. So the way our PHP driver works that it sits on top of the ODBC driver, because ODBC driver is typically more performant. Um, mm -hmm. It knows how to talk to SQL. It has all the cool, rich features. Um, so we're really going to go ahead and add the driver. Yeah, it's, it's one of our like oldest drivers, right? It is one of our oldest drivers. And that is also available on Linux now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we, I remember I was drawing that grid of like <laughs> which driver support which operating systems uh -huh. and you know where we can make all this stuff work. It's awesome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add the repository. And then we're going to make sure we have the keys set up. As you can see, I'm literally copy pasting from the website. Yeah, really real instructions that do work. Yes. Give it a couple seconds. Do, 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 do. There, there you go. go. And we just run an update to make sure our repository list is updated with the recent one that we just added. And then all you need to do is apt get install MS ODBC SQL and Unix ODBC. And that's essentially it in terms of the prerequisites. It's going to ask you, OK, yes. All right, seems like our ODBC driver was installed. And next, we'll install the PHP connector, or driver, as people like to call it. Uh, all we'll be doing here is just peckle install SQL serve. Uh, the version I'm going to use today is 4.0.7 and pdo underscore SQL serve 4.0.7. They both complement each other. Mm -hmm. um, PDO is kind of an object-oriented form that's linked to PHP. So we recommend you to use whichever one you're more comfortable with. But we have a story for both. Okay. So it's, it's absolutely up to you. They can exist side by side. Cool. So I'm going to just install both. Oh, it seems like we don't have Peckle installed, so let's make sure we do get that. Instructions to do that are also on our website. So you just go ahead and copy. The dependency for the dependency. <laughs> yeah, we actually didn't install PHP. It's my bad. No problem. All right. We're showing real, real world approaches. Exactly, there? yes. Our demos have to fail these once. <laughs> so it'll take a few seconds while that's installing. Yeah. I'll talk about the application we're going to show you today. So similar to what we it on Java. This is a PHP script. Um, very simple. You can run it using Apache on the browser, or mm -hmm. you can run it from command line. 
Um, I'm just going to run it through VS Code, trying to just show the end-to-end -end story there. Cool. Yeah, let's um, do that. We're Don't gonna forget to change your password this time. I will not. I will not forget that. <laughs> you learned that, that in yes. the last demo. And what you're going to do is you're going to insert a new row into the table. So we're going to ins insert Jake, um, update Nikita's location, and delete Jared from our table. And we're going to use the same employees table. We're going to spice things up a little. We're going to create a new schema. Mm. And we're going to use the VS, stu um, VS Code tool, the MS SQL extension, to do all of this. Okay. Kind awesome. of just to show like you can do more than just selects. Yeah. You can yeah, actually do, do everything a uh, regular tool would be able to do. Yeah, I mean, I think v VS Code is uh, a certain kind of editor, a certain kind of tool, right? It's not Visual Studio, it's not SQL Server Management Studio, it, it, it's an editor, a code editor. But even in that state, right, of limitations uh, by design, we have quite a bit of features in the exactly. early it, preview it, of the tools. It's tools. very powerful, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and run the script, which will create the schema for us. Um, and you're connected, it shows in the bottom right. So you're still connected to the same yes. SQL as before. Absolutely. Okay. So as you can see, I'm connected to localhost, the SQL server that we just installed, mm -hmm. um, using sample DB and the SA uh, username. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, execute query. All right, there you go. So we just created a new table um, with a schema, so test schema.employees. And we have three employees there. As you can see, we have Jared. Nikita and Tom. Now let's go back to our website and see what's next. So as you can see, we never installed our driver. Yep. So so let's go ahead and. Our prerequisite is missing. Yes. So copy that. All right. So it downloaded our source code. Um, now it's going to do a bunch of build work, um, and it's going to do a bunch of linking work, as you can see. Mm -hmm. It'll take about five to ten seconds typically. I used to program in PHP a long time ago. It was one of my, um, I would say maybe like my third project in my life that I was given. I, used, I started with like uh, ASP, classic ASP back in the day. Okay. And we just had this PHP project that was just sitting there and needed some maintenance work. And, and I was like, how could it be? <laughs> it's a, it's a bit that I, I was able to patch up their site. But uh, PHP is, is quite a, I, I would say I had a pleasant experience. I think just some people, you know, it's, languages are religious. A yeah, bit, it's right? one of those languages that it's, either you love it yeah. or you hate it. Yeah, and I came away with a, with a fine kind of experience. All right, cool. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, it says build process completed successfully, install OK. And now it's telling us to add our extension to the ini e file. Um, that's important because PHP needs to know that you just added these extensions. Mm -hmm. Then it needs to load it. Right. Um, so the instructions to do that are also on our website. So I'm just going to copy these. Um, let's see, copy them one by one. All right. So we added it to a couple of our ini e files, and then we have two variants, so we have to do it twice. All right, so as you can see, we have four echo statements. It's all it's saying, add this extension to my PHP um, fold, uh, php.ini file. Uh, and you can confirm that you actually have PHP installed by running php minus v. As you can see, we're running v7.0.8, and that's, that's the one where we added uh, the driver. And we're pretty much set to run our first application now. So if I scroll down further. So you're just going to grab the code like. Literally, the yes. Demo. I'm going to go ahead and. Yeah, where's the copy button? There you go. Go ahead and copy that code and paste it here. And I also have the PHP extension for VS Code here. I guess it's not picking it up because there's no file extension or something. Yeah, I got to save it as something. So I'm yeah. going to use the same folder Andrea had. going to call it sample.php. All right, there you go. So it picked up uh, the colors and things like that. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can go ahead and run this right now. All right, there you go. So it says, I inserted one new row, updated the location for Nikita, um, deleted Jared. Um, read the data, and now we have three rows. Let's go ahead back to our VS Code extension for SQL and see if it actually works. So I'm going to run the select query. And there you go. So Nikita now lives in Sweden. Um, Jared is no longer in the table because we deleted him. 
and you have Tom and Jake. And that pretty much sums it up. So is, as you can is Jared wearing a red shirt? Is that how we're getting rid of him every time? I, I think so. We, yeah, we, it seems like it. When we were working on the website, we were like, okay, we have four names here. Who should we be somebody has to Somebody has to die in the away mission. That's the, that's the rule. Yeah, poor Jared. He took, yeah. he took the brand there. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, in a matter of minutes, I would say you got the PHP driver, its yeah. dependencies. You installed PHP from the go, because we didn't have it. Um, ran a sam simple app, did a few queries, and verified the results using the VS Code extension. Awesome. Um, similar to the JDBC project, the PHP project is also open source. So let's just search yeah, for great. MSPHP SQL. All right, bingo. So this is our GitHub project. Um, you can come to our issues tab and go ahead and just file an issue. As you can see, we very closely monitor it. We've had a bunch of issues closed, a bunch open. If you have any questions, just go ahead and hit the new issue button, uh, leave us a comment. We also send a bunch of uh, surveys here, kind of just asking, hey, what features do you guys want? Uh, so we sent one out recently, and people are like, I want always encrypted. So we're going to start building that uh, right. in the next I'm few months. I'm not surprised there. It's a, it's yeah, a good feature. That's a good feature. So that's one of the cool features that we're adding. Um, Kind of just making sure all our drivers are at par uh, with like the best features, the hero features. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool driver. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to leave us an issue, or as Andrea said, join our chat room. We monitor that pretty actively as well. Cool. Well, I think the big takeaway here is look, we we are very serious about our connector store. We want to enable all these languages and frameworks to connect. We're we're committed to, to supporting them. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have mission critical stuff, call our CTS number if you have issues, and then. If you have suggestions, if you want to you know, submit some code changes, you've got a lot of places. Absolutely, we went for yeah. a whole list of, of places to, to Totally. Go. Yeah, cool. we're all about embracing um, cross-platform open source and making sure the developers succeed in what they want to do with SQL, because uh, that's one of the places where we've typically been known to not be that friendly, and we're trying to change that right yeah, now. Yeah, it's a whole new Microsoft, and yep. SQL is, is part of that, so Absolutely. it's really awesome. Yeah. Cool. Do you want to show anything else? or um, No, that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess to just end it up, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can email Andrea or me. Our email address is andrella at microsoft.com and meetb at microsoft.com. Or you can even tweet at us. Our Twitter handles are up on the screen. Cool. And just a few call to actions. Um, please check out our developer tutorials. As you can see, they're end to end. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be literally be able to install SQL on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Right. Uh, get the connectors, um, run simple examples, and try out a cool feature, which is column store. Um, pretty cool. Go to our repositories, file issues, make us work, make, yeah. us, make us earn our paycheck, I would say. Uh, and that, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you all for listening. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and I hope folks enjoyed this episode. We're, we're going to have more episodes in SQL. We have one coming up where we're going to look at VS Code a bit deeper, so Eric's going to come back on probably. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you have things you want to see or talk about, put it in the comments. We're always uh, ready to go and, and respond to your feedback, and I'll make sure all these emails and, and slide links are in the show notes as well. So thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, Dimitri. Andrea's hiding in the back there. Thank you for being on there, and we'll see you guys next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.